Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this week's Bet on Black Pitch. My name is Tawana Rivers. For those of you who don't know me, I am the CEO of the 10K Project, and we are joined here this evening with Fontanea Stokes, who is the CEO and founder of an amazing new portal that uh, uh, highlights real estate deals. And so I know how much you guys are interested in real estate because you're always sending me emails about when we're gonna talk about this or let's talk about this. And it's always related to real estate. And so when I learned about this new black owned portal, y'all know how I feel about black owned portals. When I learned about this one um, created by a sister, first of all, and that it highlighted real estate, I was super excited because we have supported um, a portal that you know has some deals uh, that Black founders are on, and it is not Black-owned. So to now know that we can look at our real estate opportunities at a Black-owned portal was amazing uh, that, that, was, that someone has tackled that area. We know that there hasn't really been a Black-owned focused portal since the very first Black-owned uh, portal, which was by the block, by, by Lynn Smith. And so um, it's nice to see someone stepping into that area now because we haven't, Lynn hasn't been active, I think for about a year or so now. And so it's nice to see someone uh, took that torch over. So super excited. Um, this portal has all types of real estate deals, right? So they are not just real estate deals by Black founders, um, but we are here to support this Black-owned portal. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to you, my dear, for you to tell us a little bit about your background, why a portal, why real estate, um, all of those things we want to know. And then we want to see this thing, right? We want to know where we need to be going to check out these deals because we're all about the deal flow and you got it. And so now we need you to tell us where to go and look every week proactively, right, <laughs> to see what you have out there. So I will turn it over to you, uh my Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for the introduction. I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen. And one second, I think you're. Here we go. And now you see the presentation view. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, awesome. So, um, hi everybody. My name is Vontina Stokes, uh, CEO and one of the co-founders of Secure Living. Uh, today, I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about who we are, um, take you through uh, some of our processes of, you know, what we do. I'll jump onto our website, show you a little bit um, about, you know, uh, how everything's laid out on our site, and then I'll get back into the presentation. Um, so. We are Secure Living. Um, we are a crowdfunding platform specifically fo focusing on real estate. Um, so we connect real estate companies with individual investors like yourselves um, who want to invest in real estate. We are registered um, with the SEC and a member of FINRA uh, based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And we really started the company to make real estate investing more accessible and affordable for the average person. Um, our goal is to really remove the barriers associated with real estate investing uh, by allowing accredited, but even more so non-accredited um, investors to browse our platform and purchase um, shares of real estate, allowing them to become co-equity um, owners. And you guys all know how real estate um, or how crowdfunding works. So you know that those funds are then pulled together and, and used towards uh, the sponsor's project, in this case, uh, the sponsor's property, you know, as defined by their, their campaign. So we are a husband-wife duo. Um, we're both real estate investors. We've been investing for about eight years. Um, I myself have a background in marketing, so product management, uh, communication, market management. Uh, Chris, he has a background in finance, so funding, um, equity analyst. He also um, has worked on teams doing like anti-money laundering, uh, know your customer. Uh, so that's that's his space. Um, once we, we got into real estate and got our feet wet a little bit, we were thinking, okay, how can we get uh, more people involved? How can our family and friends benefit? Uh, and that's when we went down this path of um, crowdfunding and, and real estate crowdfunding specifically. So uh, we went through the process to get um, 
you know, the portal up and running to get registered, which is quite a, a task in itself. Tawana knows about, about that. Um, but we're really excited to be able to, you know, just serve people who, who look like us and who want to uh, build wealth and who want to, um, you know, attain that wealth. So it's pretty obvious what the problem is and it's access. Historically, you know, real estate has really um, been reserved for the privileged few. Uh, about 90 to 93% of um, uh, U.S. adults are not uh, accredited investors, so don't have opportunity to some of these wealth uh, building strategies. So that leaves like 7% that are really high net worth, who have exclusive access to high quality real estate investing. And uh, that's really the gap that we're, we're trying to, to tap into. And um, on top of that, of course, um, many cases, if you want to invest in a property, you have to put 20% down. And, um, you know, that's not a, a little bit of money, especially, for instance, um, if you're looking at just a, let's say, um, an affordable city where the house is maybe $300,000, um, a person still has to put down $60,000 down payment. $60,000 for many people, that may be a, a year salary, for example. So it's not really attainable. It's not really feasible to be able to tap into um, you know, real estate investing on a large scale in many cases, and then to add on, uh, you know, getting somebody, if you're going to rent it, getting somebody in the property, maintaining the property, there's a lot of barriers uh, to overcome. And our company really wants to, to change that to make it more accessible. Oftentimes we get the feedback, okay, well, what's the difference between a read? What's the difference between a fund? Uh, so I wanted to kind of differentiate some of those and, and show where our value proposition is. So uh, REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust, they're publicly and privately traded. Um, they, they have management fees. Um, a lot of people don't know that up to 25% of your investment can actually go in other asset classes like stocks, for example. Um, and there's also, you know, limited visibility um, to see specifically how the project's being managed or who's managing it, right? Because compared to a portal, we, you can contact and, you know, speak with a sponsor directly. There's also funds as a way for people to raise capital for real estate. Um, typically, they have a lot longer holding periods. Uh, five to 10 year holding period or five to eight years is, is very normal. They have very high minimum investments. Um, $100,000 I see is, is very standard for real estate, especially if you talk about syndication, if any of you are familiar with syndication at all. Um, and they also have very high management fees. So um, some cases, uh, like people who have funds that are in real estate, they actually come to us wanting to list their deals on our platform. Um, and they drop the minimum investment to 25000 for example. And we're like, okay, well, that doesn't really fit, you know, what we're trying to do. So just to give you an example, uh, funds can get quite ex uh, expensive and also limited diversification. If you have to spend 25000 then how far, um, you know, can you go? How far will your money take you if you want to diversify and invest in several different things? So, you know, that's why we, we love this option for real estate crowdfunding, the ability to really customize your real estate portfolio um, to say, okay, I want to invest in um, projects that are one year, rather short term um, investment periods that are located in this region um, with the ROI of, you know, in this range to really be able to pick and choose what's best for your financial situation, what's best for, um, you know, your investing portfolio in total. And of course, you have direct contact with the project sponsors. We have lower minimum investments. What we really try to aim for is a minimum investment of $250. Um, there's a little bit of um, freedom for the project sponsor, but um, we really try to push them towards that $250. And, and, you know, we haven't really seen that that's an issue. We think that's a good um, entry point where people can potentially get multiple shares as well. And we really like to focus on, um, you know, that local investment and that community impact. Um, in, in some further slides, I'll kind of show where we like to focus on with regards to where the projects are located, but we also think that people like to invest where they live. So we really um, try to, to give, um, you know, that opportunity as well. And um, just curious, in the chat, um, if you have invested in real estate, maybe just put yes 
uh, that would be, you know, interesting um, for me, also for the group, maybe if you are single family, multifamily, if you're in Chicago, if you're in, you know, Charlotte, North Carolina, where I am, um, that would be interesting. So throw that in the chat. So of course, uh, the solution is, is our platform. That's a solution to this problem where we connect real estate companies and individual investors. Um, and I just wanted to jump into our page really quick. Okay, so this is actually, um, this is a sample offering, but I did want to show you kind of how our pages are laid out and, and things like that, where you can find information. Of course, typically there would be a countdown here that's running and this would be the invest now button. We have like a little bit of information about the, the sponsor as well as the, the um, download for their pitch deck. And then we like to give a snapshot of the project. So the security type, the investment duration, um, the preferred uh, rate of return, the project type, whether it be residential, multifamily, uh, commercial, the exit strategy, as well as the start date. We also have a sidebar here where we would give project updates as well as the offering document. So uh, form C, investor presentations, pro forma, qualification statement. Um, and this is not exhaustive. This could be longer depending on how the sponsor has organized uh, their information. We then like to get a little bit into the project. So um, uh, 10 townhomes, the square footage, um, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, the potential sale price of each unit. Um, in this case, like before or after upgrades. Um, the total budget for the project. Here you can see different renderings and different floor plans of what the property uh, will look like. We provide a little bit of information about the company, the management team. Uh, also, we like to you know link to their LinkedIn or some other um, profile where you can get a little bit more information about them. We touch on the market, of course, some key uh, statistics. The offering itself, uh, the total they want to raise, uh, the minimum target amount, how the funds will be used, the ROI, why to invest, uh, previous projects, and of course, um, if you're logged in, then you can leave those comments as well to get information um, from the sponsor. So this is like standard of how we um, lay out our pages, and I'll talk about this um, a little bit later while I'm not going into a lot of detail about a live, uh, a live project. So. Okay, let me make sure I'm going back to the right screen here. One second. Okay, and are you seeing the presentation again? Not yet? We still see the same slide. Okay, one second. There we go, right? There we go. Okay, thank you. So our value to um, investors, if you invest on our platform, one is to hedge risk, uh, to balance your portfolio. I'm assuming um, that you are also invested in other um, you know, crowdfunding campaigns or maybe stocks, or maybe you're thinking about it, um, to be able to have that option to diversify. And that brings me into point two, which is to diversify in a, a real physical, tangible asset. We see um, a, a benefit to that. Um, of course, with each project, there are defined terms, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, the holding period, the ROI, the security type. One thing we like to really dig into is to have multiple exit strategies. We know sometimes market changes or things are unforeseen, but if that's a way we can mitigate risk by really um, defining uh, different exit strategies out of the property to, to make sure that there is a way for um, investors to try to you know, get their returns. We know that there's always a risk with investing, but we do our best to, to work with sponsors to see how they can mitigate that risk. Uh, we also work with sponsors who have a proven track record. And then of course, the, the last point is that um, opportunity for cash flow and uh, dividends. 
So who is raising capital on our platform? It's mainly real estate developers, um, not only real estate developers, but that's kind of who fits our who fits our business model best. And that's just because in many cases, they're also developing in phases or raising capital in phases. So that really fits well with uh, with crowdfunding. We do focus um, on the southeastern region. Um, that's where we're located. We we do entertain projects from other places, but we really try to dig into the, the local markets. Regarding uh, property types, multi-unit properties, housing developments. Um, but we've also been approached by, you know, people who want to open up franchises. We've been approached by people or who want to, um, you know, build a manufacturing plant. Uh, so there's some interesting projects that come across our desk. And we do look at each um, a project, you know, individually, um, do we really dig in? Um, even if it doesn't fit our normal criteria, we still look at it and say, okay, do the numbers make sense? Is this attractive? Uh, so we're kind of open in the projects that we select. Regarding our services, why do real estate developers come to us? One is because they want to diversify their funding. So maybe they've been working with a lender, um, you know, they've been qualified for a mortgage, but they also want to, you know, be able to set the terms of their deal to be able to um, have a, another set of capital um, besides a bank. They also come to us for uh, process efficiencies. So maybe they have their investor base, but they have a hard time um, communicating with them or sending out, you know, uh, tax information and different things like that. So we really help them um, you know, manage their investors and, of course, that transaction process as well. In some cases, um, real estate developers also just want to grow their investor base. A lot of them historically have only dealt with accredited investors, and they really want to open it up to their local community. That's the reason why they would contact us. And, of course, they want to uh, utilize our exemptions because we are a regulated funding portal. We help them, um, you know, issue those securities, those shares. Um, uh, in a more cost-effective way and a, a more efficient way when it comes to the processes. So typically um, they find us or we find them via LinkedIn, uh, real estate events and referrals. Of course, referrals are our favorite way. So I think this is one of the most important slides. Um, it is our sponsor review process, just to give you an idea of how we are vetting the, the projects. Um, most of them uh, don't make it to the, the point where they actually have a, um, you know, a campaign, a raise on our platform, um, just because we really wanna protect um, investors as much as possible and make sure that the deal makes sense. So when somebody comes to us, a real estate company, a real estate developer comes to us, um, the first thing we do is we evaluate the deal. We say, um, is the project within their core competency? Um, you know, is it something they have experience in? Is the material professional? Does it conform to industry standards? We also look at um, data. Does it um, prove their assumptions that they've made about the market? Just to really verify if they're saying is uh, what they're saying is accurate. Um, what do they say? You know, we don't we don't want projects where they're putting lipstick on a pig. Yeah, we, we avoid that. Um, of course, we're looking at location. We're looking at other sources of funding. We also want to see, um, does the developer have any skin in the game? You know, what have they put towards the project from their personal finances? Um, we look at their contracts with vendors or any purchase agreements they have um, for the land. Um, we look at their projections. Of course, I mentioned that their, their exit strategy. And then um, once that phase is complete, then we also look at the company and the sponsor. So we do our internal checks, but we also work uh, with a third party um, external provider to do checks as well. And here um, for the background checks, that's any fraudulent activity, money laundering, bankruptcy, personal debt, business debt. Um, we do the checks on anybody in the company who owns 20% uh, or more. And of course, we also uh, check their track record, past projects, um, how are those running, um, their experience. We like to see five um, plus years of experience. Um, and also, of course, we check the team management team, how it's structured, their experience. 
um, you know, what happens if if the operator of the project dies, just, you know, we try to look at all those things, you know, who is gonna manage the project then? Um, and of course, we also look at offering documents. Uh, we have, you know, feedback and suggestions to ensure that it, it's conforming, um, that it hits all those regulatory standards. We check the disclosure, the financials, and of course, um, we review Form C, but we also um, recommend uh, a legal counsel that we work with to recommend forms, uh, to review Form C as well. And from what I understand, you guys are all experts on Form C. Um, so we also try to go through that with a fine tooth comb. So when it comes to our fee structure for investors, we do not charge investors to invest. That is um, really against everything we believe. You know, if we want to help people build wealth, then we don't believe on tacking on fees here and there. Um, we want what you invest to stay in your pocket. So we waive transaction fees. Um, it'll either be paid for us, Secure Living the Company, or the project sponsor. And what I wanted to kind of um, point out here are some of the other type of fees that are common on platforms. So one just being the platform fee. Typically, this is charged to sponsors, but it can also be charged to investors as a percentage of their investment. Um, you also see transaction fees, and this is typically just to cover the cost of processing the payment. Um, this is standard for basically everything, right? Whenever we pay for something, there's always a transaction fee um, that could be waived or not waived. Uh, some portals will charge um, an annual fee to just cover the cost of maintaining the account, or there's also performance-based fees charged on the performance of the asset. So I just kind of wanted to point out, you know, some of those differences. Be sure that you're aware of what you're being charged. Um, it may not always be so obvious, some of those fees. So, you know, definitely read those subscription agreements, you know, look at the, the disclosures just so you guys are, are aware. Okay, so what's coming up in our pipeline? Uh, first of all, I would encourage you to just register for an account. That way you'll be first to know about, um, you know, what's going on on our site, um, what deals we have, things like that. As a funding portal, just so you guys know, when I talk about offerings, I have to, I have to speak about them all the same. So I have to talk about all their terms the same way. Um, and things like that. So what I have here are some upcoming offerings where we are gauging interest. I won't go into them in detail because then I do have to talk about them each all the same. So I would encourage you um, to just look at the pages to review them. If you do have um, an interest to go ahead and submit interest on those individual pages. And of course, um, after you register for an account, if you have questions about the offering, um, if the deals go live, then you do have that opportunity to um, ask those questions to the sponsor. Um, I'm sure as you know, your um, if you do decide to you know, say that you have an interest, that is not a commitment to invest. Um, it's just showing that you have interest. Um, so I will jump back onto the website and just um, show you where you can find the offerings. So this is our homepage, um, and it's quite simple. View offerings is one of the first things you see. And here are, you know, those, those opportunities. Um, the link that we've been putting in the chat is actually to register for an account. Uh, but if you scroll further down, you'll also see an opportunity to view offerings. Um, for us right now, registering for an account is, you know, one of the most important things so you can get plugged into the company. Um, we're really focusing on growing our investor base. We know that about 80% of um, a campaign's funding will actually come from the sponsors network. But we also, you know, we do want to have this as like a marketplace where there are continuous uh, deals, um, you know, coming on the platform. And we're really, like I said, you can pick and choose. Um, and right now we are just trying to grow our investor base. So when we have opportunities, you know, people are ready, they're ready to invest. So that wraps it up for me. Um, I hope there were some questions in the chat. I hope people were engaged and interested. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. 
Absolutely. Go ahead, guys, and put your questions in the chat. I, I'm going to start us off because I'm an investor and I've got some questions. Okay. Um, if you want to stop sharing and then that way we can sure. be bigger on the screen. So I know that the developer is kind of your target sponsor, but mm -hmm. something that came to mind as you were talking, um, and I like to always kind of correlate everything we're doing here at the 10K Project, right? And there are, um, there's a small group of us that have committed to a tax lien boot camp, And so we're getting ready to um, learn all things tax liens. And then we're taking on to begin with Marion County, which is in Indianapolis, Indiana, right? Mm -hmm. And so the boot camp is kind of going to hold our hand and walk us through this, this auction. And Many of us have the um, business model that will be, you know, flipping those sure. some of those properties. Some might be multiple um, uh, uh, dwellings, right? Some may be single family homes. Um, some may be manufacturing. So, like I see, you know, like I think about all of those things. And so, even though we're not developers, we may, um, or I won't say we may, is your portal a place where we could come and create an offering obviously if we meet all of the criteria that you go through right that's first and foremost but if we meet those criteria could we you know if i bought a manufacturing plant right mm -hmm. could i have it here on the on the site on the secure living site and then you know have an offering um if i had a multi unit apartment complex, could I list that here on the portal um, and offer a preferred interest rate or whatever, right? Um, is, is, will those, will people like the average um, real estate investor also work even though we're not developers? Yes. Yeah, so that's a good question. And, and the answer is yes. Um, I think, well, you understand it. Everybody else who's listening will understand it. What we have to do is really manage expectations so people know it is a capital raise. Mm -hmm. So that's where we see um, maybe there's a little bit of pushback from, you know, investors who are not real estate developers is there's more of that time factor. But, but of course, that's why we say, hey, if you're interested in a deal, get us involved early. So mm -hmm. that we can really be, you know, part of the process. There's things that we can do to support with marketing. There's ideas we can throw around to really um, help you. So once you're ready for your campaign to go live, then you're good to go. Um, for us, there's also some, you know, creative strategies for investors who come to us. Um, let's say, for example, there's a real estate investor. They're working on a project. Oh, but they want to go ahead and withdraw some of their capital mm -hmm. and put it towards another property. Mm -hmm. But what they do is they they raise capital to dilute their funds, to dilute their share, uh, you know, in their project. So the investor's money now replaces theirs. They can take their money and put it towards the next property. Right. So um, there's a lot of things that can be discussed, a lot of different strategies that can be implemented. But yes, fixing and flipping, it's it's totally possible. Um, you know, if, if an investor only needs $60,000, you know, then, then maybe that can be raised in a much shorter, uh, time frame. Right. Yeah. I also see this replacing, if, if I, if I say that replacing hard money lending, yeah. like I see this yeah. as a solution to those people who might be paying a way higher rate exactly. to get hard money than mm -hmm. to come to the community, right? To, to, to think, be able to give a, a, a what is, you know, a favorable mm -hmm. interest rate to the community, but still much less than they're paying in, in hard money lending. I funds. absolutely agree. I think this is, me personally, as a real estate investor, I think this is a much better alternative to hard money lenders. Yeah. Because um, like, like you said, right, you can still, you know, the sponsor can set the terms and the terms can still be favorable for all parties involved, for themselves and you know, for the individual investors. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. Okay, let's get, I saw a couple of comments in the chat. So let me go to those first. Let me find them. Y'all know y'all not supposed to be putting things in the chat that are questions because I can't never, I can never find them. Okay, Steven said, is there a specific age group or financial market 
uh, you guys are targeting. So are you, I guess, I guess for individual investors, yeah. Yeah, um, it's it's pretty broad, um, you know, with with an age group, um, you know, maybe I would say twenty five to you know mid to late forties, um, you know, e- even fifties. We we speak with individual, or excuse me, we speak with um, financial institutions, and you know, some of the feedback we get is that some people you know, getting into the late fifties or, you know, early sixties, they may be a little bit more risk adverse when it comes to real estate. Um, I view it as a safe, right? We, we know there's always risk. Right. I view it as pretty safe. Um, but I think it, it, it just depends. Yeah. Um, we want anybody who can invest on our platform, right. obviously, um, you know, 18 and up us citizen. Um, so you know, it's interesting. I'm not surprised that the bank or the financial institution would tell you that people a little older are risk adverse, because I think the assumption is that everyone has planned accordingly early, mm-hmm. right? And that's not the case, right? It's, it's I'm 54 years old, right? I turned 54 on Saturday. I did not start actively investing until my 40s, right? Mm-hmm. And so it, had I started at 30, then I might be risk averse, right? But starting at 40, I'm risking everything, right? <laughs> because, <laughs> because I'm so behind the eight ball, right? And so I think I think to your point, anyone who can um, very responsibly, right, invest, right? I always say we, we don't want anybody call, trying to call a sponsor or the issuer at midnight talking about I want my 250 back, right? That's not a thing, right? Yes. So you want responsible investors, right? Who understand the risk, mm-hmm. right? And who understand the terms very clearly um, to be interested in these opportunities. So I think in our community, there are many people like me that are, you know, trying to catch up for lost time. Um, and so, you know, our, our risk um, is or, or our, our willingness to be a little more risky is maybe a little higher. Mm-hmm. But I, I tend to agree with you. Real estate is one of those things. And we, we, we say it, right? We say it all the time. You hear it all the time. You hear it from some of the top financial analysts. Real estate is one of those things that it's 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 going to be a guarantee at some point in time, right? We know the market fluctuates, Absolutely. right? Mm-hmm. We know the market does what it does, but as sure as the market dips, it is going to once again rise, right? Now it may dip again on you, but then it will rise again on you. Like, like those are the certainties that we know and we've seen for decades about real estate. Um, and so, you know, I, that's one of the reasons why I loved that that was your focus um, and that you, and that it wasn't just something you, you know, thought of doing one day, you've been doing this, right? You just created something that allows others to now get in the game. Like you guys have been in the game for what, eight years you said, and you've created this system upon which it becomes easier for, for us to do that, right? I don't have to search all over for my deal flow. Now I can come to secure living. I don't have to know somebody who knows somebody who's investing in something. I can just come to secure living, right? And I wasn't joking. Like I really anticipate people will use this kind of as a one-stop shop, right? To be able to say, okay, I've got, you know, tax money, right? Let me go to secure living and see what I can invest in, right? You know, I'm not going to the Nike store. I'm coming to secure living to see what I can invest in, right? Mm-hmm. If you get a bonus at work, come here. If you get a little disposable income, come here. Like that's the, you know, uh, that's the beauty of a portal like this. Um, and, and, and as you can see, just from the sample of what we saw in the snapshot of some of the terms, right? Without going deep into the deals, um, those look like favorable rates to me, but of course we've got to go in and look and do our due diligence and all those things we talk about and that we, we, we teach about here, um, and look at all the documents and all of that stuff. But, um, at face value, you know, it, it appears that you've done some good sourcing for deal flow Mm -hmm. that will really change the trajectory of some of our members and, and their families and how they see wealth and how they now build wealth. 
um, to be able to now build a, a real estate portfolio without having to go out and buy the piece of real estate yourself, right? Without having to flip it yourself, without having to do all of those things. Now you can be a real estate investor. Absolutely. And all you did was you sat home and you clicked on the website and you went shopping essentially, right? <laughs> And so I love that you've created um, a mechanism in which you could do that. And so thank you for that. And you're right, that, that FINRA process is something else. So the fact that you guys went, the, the fact that you went through it and got through it, you, you come out with a level of credibility for me because I know what that process looks like and the yeah. SEC and FINRA don't play. They don't. And, oh, they don't. <laughs> I mean, we, we see it now, right? There, there's, there's portals being fined currently. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it is serious and we, we definitely take it serious. Yeah. Well, wonderful. All right. We've got some questions. Make sure I got everything in the chat just so I don't. Okay, guys. So I'm going to focus on the Q&A. So if you've got any more questions, go to Q&A. Shanetta said, what neighborhood class will the homes be located in? So I guess you're, so, so Shanetta, make sure I'm understand, you know, in, are we looking at um, uh, opportunities that are in the nicer neighborhoods of the cities that they're in? Or are we looking at areas that have been or are being gentrified? Or are we looking to buy the block and then enhance it? You know, what, what types of areas of the, of the various cities? Okay, yeah, typically um, the focus is really on um, class, we, we say class uh, B type of areas, um, A being more premium. Um, where there's a lot of development going on, even outside of, you know, the project in question where maybe there's medical centers popping up, you know, there's uh, more walkable uh, neighborhoods where, um, you know, there's the grocery store that is uh, below apartments or, you know, that, that sort of thing. Um, where the there's really a lot of development going on in the areas and, and still in the Southeast, you see still quite a bit of this, um, in North Carolina, in Texas, there's still a lot of areas where there's a lot of development um, and there's still housing shortages. Very good. Very good. I also just had a thought. So we have had um, an amazing founder come pitch with us. His name is Lanier Richardson and he is a, a developer. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna make that introduction with you. I'll send an email this evening. He has raised money twice via okay. equity crowdfunding on a different real estate portal. So I am going to be very happy to introduce him to you. Um, he's an amazing gentleman. He does shopping centers. That's kind of his niche. Okay. Um, he takes shopping centers in um, in our, you know, historically black neighborhoods and he makes them more premium so okay. that we can have, you know, premium places with premium um, uh, real, real uh, retailers coming in and servicing the neighborhoods. Okay, okay that'd be great. Um, introduction as well. Thank you. Uh, wonderful. All right. Uh, Sharnetta also said, should we invest within an entity or in our personal name? So let's talk a little bit about that. So when they sign up to create the account, should they open an LLC? If they already have an LLC, can they use that? Uh, you can invest uh, via your company. Uh, I think, uh, you know, for tax purposes, that would be, you know, one of the reasons why somebody would do that, or maybe to protect your, your personal, you know, assets a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm, I can't recommend, you know, one way or the other, but, you know, you have to talk to like, you know, some uh, tax consultant about that, but you would be able to do that. Yes. And um, we have seen uh, individual uh, investors do that. So the portal allows um, an individual, a business, or a trust to sign up as the as the the investor. Um, not a trust at, at this moment. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. if, if that's a need, um, I would have to circle back and see um if that can be supported. Okay. Um, if you do want to invest uh, through your company, it requires a little bit more uh, documentation that you would have to to upload into our portal. Very good. Uh, Ms. Patrice says. Are older people who have, oh, I think I think that's a plan B. I think that's a, a part B of her question. Hold on, let me see. Uh, 
Ms. Patrice, what are you trying to say here? Or older people who have done a good job of planning can have excess funds to invest in Black people. Ms. Patrice, I'm not sure what you were trying to say, my dear. I'll go to your, I'll go to your, your next question. You said, um, oh, I forgot about Averill. Oh, I'll make that connection as well. So we had another amazing, um, actually she is a real estate developer because she's, she's doing it big. She, I don't even think you can call her just a house flipper because she's really doing great things. Um, we will make that introduction because she would be someone also that could benefit from this. So thank you for that, Ms. Patrice. I would have forgotten about Abram. Where is she located out of? Do you remember? Oh, where does she live? I don't remember. Okay, well, no worries. Part of me that, there's a part of me that feels like it's Texas, but I'm not sure. But, okay. I'm not sure. but I, I will make that introduction tonight as well. Okay, thank you. Um, oh, Ms. Patrice said you wrote it when I was talking about the target market. Okay, <laughs> got you. So you're talking, so, so, or, so you were saying, or older people who have done a good job of planning and they have excess cash and they're able to invest in Black people. Got you, yes, that makes perfect sense. Uh, Miss Jackie said, and Miss Jackie actually said in the chat that she had, is, is already signed up because she saw you. What did you say, Miss Jackie? I saw that in the note. You saw her on another show. Um, Maybe uh, Nicole Pendergrass, she yeah. said. Share the wealth show. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she already signed up. So Jackie says, have you thought about creating a wallet feature in your portal so investors can add funds for a future investment? That is an idea uh, that we've played around with. Um, right now, it's more of, of a resource topic. Uh, there are things that we want to do uh, to the portal to enhance it, um, but that requires uh, revenue. Uh, so it, it's definitely like, you know, a phase two or, or phase three. But that, that is an excellent idea. Good. Anonymous says, please clarify the difference between secure living and something like Fundrise. That's the first part of the question. And then the second part is, is it the target audience and the ability for a sponsor to submit properties to investors? Okay. Um, right. There, there are those companies out there like, like Fundrise. Um, in many cases, what happens is... Um, a fund, for example, will present themselves like a crowdfunding portal, but they are not. Um, and in, in many cases, they're also, it's their own deals. Um, so um, that they're, you know, promoting on the platform or, or raising capital for. And we really want to be able to, you know, match real estate investors with the local community where people can invest in those deals. Um, I would also look at the fees a little bit, uh, just as you know, something to kind of check. But of course, there are those other platforms out there. Uh, they, they, I think they're actually a broker dealer and not a um, a crowdfunding platform. I, I agree. They're they're definitely a broker dealer. Yeah, yeah. Sunny says I have a commercial property about nine thousand square feet for sale, along with several lots and a church. Would I be able to list these items on the site? Not sure if this is how your site is used, but thought I would ask. I would. I love what you're doing and will be sure to check it out. Okay, thank you. Um, that is not how our site is used. Um, so people are not, you know, selling their their property just just outright. It is, you know, as a way to to issue shares of their property um, and then using that capital for renovations or you know whatever is needed. Um, are you located in Charlotte, by the way? Because I do know somebody looking for a commercial space. Ah. <laughs> Sunny, answer that question for me in the chat. Ohio. Okay. All right. Well I'll keep it in mind. <laughs> Um, very, very good. That's interesting though. So Sonny, you're looking to sell it, but if you were looking to enhance it, right? You could raise capital to do those renovations, right? And then after you did that, 
and then you sold it, right? Mm -hmm. Then you could make more money from your sale and your investors could make a favorable return. So it's almost like prolonging the sale because some of these properties, I'm sure that you, you, you have, some of them will eventually be sold, right? I would imagine after the work's done on the portal. I've been trying to raise capital. Well, well let, let, let's chat. Yeah, let's just chat. Um, I'll put my email in the in the chat or you can send out, you know, do the contact form, but. Wonderful. Good job, Sonny, for asking a question. Good, good job. I mean, the, the, the beauty of it is, is we do talk to real estate people all day, every day. Um, so if there's also a connection that we can make, then we're more than happy to do so. Very good. Yes, Mark. So Mark's saying Tannen Andrews. So Tannen is um, a founder who has pitched with us and he has created a co-op that will eventually start buying real estate. Um, I don't think he owns any real estate today, but he eventually will start buying real estate. And yes, he would be a perfect, uh, another perfect connection. Um, and I can make that, that introduction now, but right now I don't think he has anything in the co-ops portfolio. I think he has stuff in his own, but not in the co-ops portfolio. But yeah, Tannen is a great connection. Agreed. Very good. I always love how the community is so, they are so diligent with trying to make those connections. Like <laughs> That's what I was just, I'm, I'm actually a little bit impressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Very good. Any other questions? What other questions do you have? We heard 250 is the, the minimum, right? Most often the minimum, which I think is a, a very comfortable, great minimum. And it does allow people to buy multiple shares if they want to. Um, so that's a very, very good minimum. What else, guys? What other questions do we have? Looking at my notes here. <laughs> Edward said, that's how we do. Yes. <laughs> what else? I'm also thinking this is a great, um, for some of our members who have investment clubs, like I'm a president of an investment club. And this is the, again, the perfect way to get into a real estate deal. My investment club has avoided real estate up until now, because we've always had that conversation of, well, if we wanted to flip, who's going to be in charge of it? And who's going to do this? And who's going to do that? Right? Because the resources within the club are limited, right? We all have other ventures, we have jobs, like, like nobody can oversee a real estate project. But now we can add this to our portfolio. Actually, what's interesting is right when you started talking, I sent them a text message and I was like, y'all need to come on right now on, on 10K because we're talking to a black owned real estate portal. Because it's like, now we can add that into our portfolio. So for those of us in the community that have investment clubs, and I know there are many of you here because we taught you how to open one or start one, um, this is something you want to share with your investment club members um, because this is something that you, know, you may be able to utilize and build your portfolio that way. So definitely consider that. Um, Ms. Patrice says, are you live or when will you go live? So we we are live. Um, we we took a step back a little bit because we really wanted to focus on growing our own um, investor base uh, because you know we we were having deal flow and then we were like well we we can't actually fund you know we can't help you fund your deal so we had to take a step back and be like okay well let's let's really try to reach out and and target um, investors so um, we are live uh, yes with potentially some of the deals uh, that you that I showed in the upcoming offers uh, going live depending on you know what's happening with the sponsor and also the interest that's expressed on our on our uh, portal. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about what's needed here, right? So it sounds like we are needing first and foremost to all of us to click on that link, right? We, we, we're going to put it in the the comments section of the Facebook live as well. We'll be, we'll be adding, it'll be my Good Morning Cousins post tomorrow, right? Telling people to, to, to sign in. The, the first thing it sounds like you need us to do is to register and create an account. Yes. Right? 
And then obviously look at the deal flow and make a decision if any of those deals fit in our portfolios, meet, meet the, the, the um, investment uh, profile of what we're looking for. But the first thing it sounds like we need to do is get this link to everybody we know, right? Mama and them, all of them, right? <laughs> and ask them to create an account. So where typically I tell you guys, share the campaign link, share the campaign link. I'm going to say something a little different tonight, right? I know you never would have thought I would say anything different, but <laughs> I'm going to say something a little different tonight. Tonight is about creating that account, right? So sharing with everyone that there is a black owned real estate portal. And this is how you can look at real estate deal flow. So getting them that link, and then obviously they're going to click in it, look around, and hopefully they invest. Um, that, that'll be our, our initial call to action uh, tonight. And then obviously for us, those of us who are already investors, right, we already you know, know that this is something we want to get involved in, we've got an extra little step that we really need to consider adding some of this into our portfolio if we see the deal flow. But I think when we share this, we need to share it with um, clearer instructions than sometimes we do. Right, it's really about go ahead and, and and register for this because this is a big deal. Dean said he already registered. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. <laughs> and and I would say, you know, after you're looking at at the deals we have, um, if there's something specific that you are looking for when it comes to you know real estate investing, then let us know. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we're you know we're we're vetting deals, um, but of course we also want to know what does our investor base want when it comes to real estate investing opportunities? Right. Very good. Very, very good. Yeah. When I, when I answer that question, it's more about the terms mm -hmm. than the type of real estate. Mm -hmm. um, cause, cause that's cause I started late. Right. So the terms matter to me. Right. <laughs> so I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> they should. <laughs> Oh, very good. Carolyn said create an account. Michael said create an account. Very good. Now, Carolyn, Michael, and Dean, now you got to send it to three people, Edward said. Edward said, now you send that link to at least three people now that you created your account. Edward is on it. Now, Edward <laughs> is on it. <laughs> Chandra says, will or can international properties be included in the future? Uh, they will not be. And this is just for regulatory purposes. We have a certain framework that we have to, you know, operate um, under. So there's certain things we can and cannot do. And Shonda, remember, it's the same way with other crowdfunding um, issuers, right? The company has to be a U.S.-based company. Um, so this all, all falls under those same, you know, the Jobs Act and the SEC rules. Yeah. What other questions do you guys have? <laughs> Edward said on it like mud on pigs. <laughs> oh goodness, I love my community. <laughs> what other questions do you guys have? I know this one, I, I knew this one would either you'd be so excited that you'd have like a bunch of questions or it'd be very clear because we, we're, we're familiar with the portals. We know how they operate. And this truly has... Um, given us kind of a one-stop shop. I mean, I really, really feel like this is great. Um, I can tell you for me, this is great because, you know, I'm looking for deal flow all day, every day, right? To share with the community. Um, and so now for them to be able to just go to one place and look is going to be great. I, I really, really love that. Tracy said, yep, we're clear. Tina said, yep, very excited about this one. Okay. I knew you would be. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> very good. All right. So I don't have, I'm looking at my questions. I know I've got some takeaways. I've got to make three connections, Lanier, Averill, and Tannen. But I didn't have any other personal questions either. So I think this is where we give those final statements, right? I'll go first and I'll, I'll, I'll let our wonderful founder close it out. It's simple for me. 
we know what we have to do. We know why we're here, right? We're all part of this community because we wanna build wealth. We wanna help black founders. Um, tonight, we have the opportunity to do both. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to sign up and um, open an account, right? We should all be able to do that very easily. Even if you're not ready to invest yet, right? Even if you know, oh, you know what? I don't, I'm, I got a plan to wanna, I may not have disposable income until next year. That's okay. Open the account tonight, right? And continue to learn, continue to look at the deal so that you can start comparing deal terms, use it as an educational opportunity to see what kind of terms are out there, what type of investment opportunities are out there. Start looking, comparing, contrasting, you know, if you see terminology that you don't understand, start learning what that means, right? So even if you don't have money today to invest, today matters because you get to prepare for when you do have the money to invest. And so your, your call to action is just like everybody else's. Create the account today. And Edward says, share it with at least three people, right? These are not difficult things. <laughs> So, so that is what I am asking of you this evening, and I will be doing the exact same thing. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Stokes, what's your final words for us, my dear? What, what more can I say? Thank you so much for having me. This has been great. Obviously, the, uh, the community is wonderful. Um, I'm thankful to be a part of it now. Um, so I will definitely uh, utilize uh, my membership. Um, you know, like Tawana said, please register for an account. And if you have any questions, then reach out. I mean, that that's the main thing, right? We're very transparent. We're very open. We want to have dialogue. We want to know, you know, what you're interested in, what questions you have, if something else pops in your head a week from now or tomorrow, you know, definitely reach out. And um, I look forward to to staying connected with you guys. Very good. Well, you're part of the family now, so it's kind of like a gang. Until we jump you out, you in. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and we can't jump you virtually, so you in. <laughs> All right, everybody. It has been a pleasure this evening. Again, another amazing founder that we presented to you. Um, and hopefully we do what we need to do to make sure that this portal is a success and it stays around. Remember, I started this by saying there was a black owned real estate portal. It was actually, uh, Lynn Smith was the first black owned portal, FINRA approved portal person. So it was before seat at the table. It was before Crowd Wall Street got their approval. And, and Lynn closed her doors about a year, year and a half ago. So to know that we have another black owned portal that is focusing on real estate. Um, it's important to me that we make sure these doors stay open, right? We need to make sure we support. We need to make sure she's able to continue to bring amazing deal flow to us so that we can build wealth through real estate. And so if you don't take anything else away, right? This is about us getting an amazing opportunity um, as investors, to be able to have one place where we can come, where there's, these deals are already sourced for us by people who have experience in this um, industry of real estate investing. And so, you know, let's take advantage of it and let's take care of it. They need us uh, to participate and to show up because we just can't have another amazing Black-owned business close their doors because they don't have participation, right? We should be the people that they're looking for and that they need, and we should be enough to keep these doors all the way open. And so let's do our part to do just that. All right. Well, I love you guys. Thank you for showing up week after week as we love on um, a founder every week. And I appreciate you guys and have a wonderful, Wonderful, wonderful evening. Until next time. All right. Good night, everyone.